Hello, um, I wanted to update my tutorial on how my entrance checker variant for my pack works. So, I've changed it quite a lot um, in the past few weeks slash months. It now actually has logic. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just gonna like run through the seed I just generated which has a bit of like stuff randomized just to show it and show on the other side how it works. Um, I personally usually run with a setup like this, track and write, um, so I have space for two maps. Um, there is, if you only have one map, it's basically the same, but there's three different tabs at the moment. Um, one is Overworld, which is all the Overworld checks, like, I don't know, the Ocarina minigame, whatever, stuff like that. Um, entrances, which are all the houses, grottos, dungeons and whatnot. Um, and connectors, which are all the overworld transitions. So going from Hyrule Field to Lake Halia, going the other way, you get the idea, I guess. I usually run with um, connectors down here, because this is where I'll do like my pathfinding. I guess I'll go into F11 for now, um, where I do my pathfinding while I route the game. And up here, I usually switch between overworld and entrances. Um, I may in the future have like a combined map or We'll see how it develops. Um, all three maps have the section in the lower left uh, where you can define your spawn points, your warp song destinations, and where you have um, the dungeons. So we'll get into that in a bit, I guess. Um, let me just boot up the game real quick so we can have an example. In this case, I set this um, also, yeah. Uh, there's uh, extra settings that aren't in the regular pack, um, namely all the entrance randomizer settings. In this case, I think I set spawns to be off, um, which obviously hides the spawns to be marked. Um, what else did I set off? Um, I think I also set like warp songs off, and I don't remember what else. We'll see. Um, now, obviously, the game knows your you start in Link's house, but it doesn't know where Link's house is. So once you go out here. Um, let's see where it puts us. It puts us here. Um, in the entrance tab at the fishing hole, um, all of the like entrances um, and connectors have this giant menu. At the top, your overworld areas, um, the dungeons, the grottos, and the houses. Um, there's also a possibility to split those, but I'll take the giant menu for now because it makes this plane easier. So we'll just set Link's house here. Um, and now the logic obviously knows that you have access to this. So we could now go and explore the Lake Hylia lab. We could go and check out the grotto. Or we can take the Hyrule Field Connector or we can take the Owl. So let's say we explore here for a bit. And once we're done exploring got all we can, we'll just move on and go to Hyrule Field. We'll find out where that takes us. So let me back walk over there real quick. Um, and yeah, on the other note, the overworld checks, those connectors, if they are like spotable, have still the regular menu, so you can capture items if you need them. Okay, so we go through this connector, and it takes us to Hyrule Field. So, there's a few um, things up here, um, a few areas, let's say. Um, I hope most of them are self-explanatory, otherwise if you hover long enough or if you enable the quick tooltip, they obviously show up a lot quicker. Um, you see what the exact zone is supposed to be. Like for example, this Lost Woods Bridge with a little asterisk is the one coming from Forest, because that's important to get the ocarina gift and whatnot. Um, I hope most of them are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, self but yeah, in this case, we obviously just want HF, Hyrule Field. Once we click it, um, all the connectors down here become available to us. The one open grotto becomes available to us. And in the overworld, there's obviously nothing we can get yet. So, let's say we continue. Um, so I paused just over there to the market. Let's check out another entrance. Um, and the game doesn't really care what you mark where, like say it could mark a dungeon um, uh, in this spot, it 
wouldn't really care, so like it should work perfectly fine for mixed pools. Um, if you're playing on Roman's Punch. Oh, it's actually vanilla. Um, what it's not really good at is decouple, because you can't track every entrance like separately. Okay, so in this case, um, I refer to market entrance. We mark market entrance. It opens up the two sides here. We would also usually, you should mark the way back. So say in this case, market entrance to Hyrule Field, obviously it's back out to Hyrule Field since this is not decoupled. And similarly down here, we went from uh, like Hylia to Hyrule Field. We should mark that going into London Ranch leads back to um, like Hylia. Just so you can do your pathfinding later easier. Um, on a side note, since you see capturing something like this automatically pins it down, uh, pins it. I personally don't like this since I want to like pin important stuff down there. Um, there is in the menu up here in tracking you can um, disable pin locations on item capture. Um, this way, if I am now going to capture anything more, it it won't get pinned down there automatically. So for example, here's obviously the um, guardhouse entrance. Let's say we go in there and we find, okay, the potion shop. The potion shop is a good example. Um, it's, um, for most things, there's like some some special locations down here that you can mark. So you know to come back there with a certain age or when you have certain items. Um, there's also some like generic ones like just shop, fairy, like great fairy fountain and cow. The potion shop is special. Um, because it can act as a connector, like going back out there as an adult or as a kid coming from back there and going through here can lead you to different areas, which the logic actually knows about. So in this case, you'd mark CAC Potions up front. Um, and then you'd continue your exploration and see where this takes you. And so you basically, uh, this one is also an interesting case, it's Goron City, but in the Runius Chamber, which actually allows Kit to take fire out of this room and start the Spinning Pot, for example, or open the Lost World Shortcut. And it actually knows that you can open the Lost World Shortcut um, because I told it it has sticks and I have access to the Runius Chamber. So, like, it actually mimics the logic of the Rando pretty accurately, I'd say. Um, and similarly, if we, like, take fire, go out here and then I don't know we um, open the shop we see what's in there it's another shop so it should be the shop um, I'm not gonna just give an example um, say we find the decker tree in here you mark the decker tree um, obviously you can't like see the decker tree here but now um, down here in this bottom left menu, um, the map becomes, or the decker tree becomes available. So you can actually look at it, see, you can do everything, and because we don't have a slingshot, Goma's in the logic, um, but otherwise you can grab everything in there. Similarly, um, it now has support for like all the Skultalas, whether it's dungeon Skultalas, or even if I go over here, you'll see a drastic difference, the overworld Skultalas. <laughs> um, that's all supported. Um, but yeah, this is the general idea, um, as I said, you basically just fill in the information as you go and it should gradually build, so hopefully you can run without F11 and it should show you um, everything you need to know. Say you've, you're done with this shop because there's nothing in there, you just click it off. Um, to clear up your map space. I'm hoping to improve it a little bit in the future. Um, to like have more um, better better differentiation between the stuff. Maybe also have different visuals down here for entrances you have explored and others you still need to explore. Stuff like that. Um, we'll see how it develops in the future. But yeah, that's the general idea of how to use this tracker. If you have any more questions, just hit me up on Discord. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.